we, we mm. move on forward and we'll hear from Auntie Margaret. Hello, everyone. Hello. Well, I was 22 when the state of Hawaii became a state. And my father had passed away April of that same year. And I had come home. Uh, I was newly married as well. Came home because my brother said, you need to come home. I was in Washington, D.C. then working. And um, mama needs you. So, like a good daughter, I quit work and came home. And there was a lot of buzz uh, about statehood, but I never paid much attention to it. Uh, most of the time I spent with my mother at my father's at the cemetery. We went every day. We just sat, and many times when I wanted to speak, you know, she just would say, later, we'll talk later. So later never came. So when it was, came time to vote, there were two choices. You're either gonna stay a territory or you're gonna become a state, and naturally, not being um, astute about what I was voting for, I voted for statehood. Today, I'm not sure whether I did make a good choice. I still continue to think about what other choices would we have had or what I would have had at that, at that time. I still would like to see the Hawaiians get back their lands. I would like to see independence. I would like to see how we could accomplish and continue to do the works that we do, continue to earn the dollars that we do, but still become independent. So how do we do this? What are we going to do today to make it better for all of the Hawaiians, not only in Hawaii, but here on the continent as well? Because we do count, 240,000 of us count about what we're gonna do with the future of our children and our mo'opunas. That's always been so important to me. I realize today that my mo'opunas don't know what is going on with the ceded lands. What does it mean to them? And I know my grandson who went to University of Hawaii and then was immediately flown home because he was, his time was spent surfing instead of going to school. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's back now, but he's now beginning to ask questions. Tutu, how come this and tutu, how come that? I don't have answers for him because I've never stayed in touch with what really matters to the Hawaiian people. Now that I've become aware of what, was going, what is going on and what his rights will be and what he hopes to inherit, I need to, I need to look towards educating him and my other mo'opunas that are coming up who were born here on the mainland and have no idea except for the hula and the ukulele and the music that we all know, that's their culture. And they have not yet learned that there is another side of being Hawaiian. And so I struggle with trying to get them to come together and sit in front of the, at the dinner table and say, do you know what this means? My oldest grandson now, uh, who is, um, Bill, he's now just 21. And so he's beginning to say, you know, Tutu, let's talk sometime. I said, sure, let me know when you're ready. But now I realize I can't let him know. I've got to take the initiative to say, it's time for us to sit down to talk. Life is too short. Time is moving on. And we need to accomplish some goals set some goals as to where you're gonna be from a cultural point of view. What are you gonna be thinking about from um, a political point of view? Because we don't have enough politicians out there to take on what's going to be left from the Inouye uh, background as well as a, a Kaka background. I'd like to see some of our Hawaiians here on the continent become involved in getting into the politics of Hawaiians. 
Um, that's it. Mahalo to you, Margaret, for that. I think we're going to come back to some of those issues that you've raised, but mahalo for sharing.